I'm sick over this. I have worked for the last 12 years in public life, developing a reputation for honesty and directness and blunt talk, um, one that I think is well-deserved. But, you know, when something like this happens, it's appropriate for you to question yourself, and certainly I am. Welcome back to Opinion Journal. I'm Mary Kissel. That was New Jersey Governor Chris Christie in his nearly two hour long press conference on Thursday, apologizing for the political scandal known as Bridgegate. How did a governor who's this savvy about politics get into such a mess? I've got declarations columnist Peggy Noonan joining me now. Peggy, assuming Governor Christie told the truth, and there's no reason not to assume he's telling the truth, he says he didn't know what was going on he's not uh, not sure what exactly went wrong what are the lessons here oh boy well i think it's first of all a big mess it's the type <laughs> of scandal that sticks in your mind because it's the type of scandal you understand you know you understand sex scandals you understand money scandals when it's sort of like cash in a brown paper bag at least um and and you can understand how political mischief in making life difficult in a town that had a mayor who wouldn't support you through traffic, which is another thing we all understand, would sort of uh, stick in the mind. How does it happen? I think every reporter in this town, we live in the media capital of the world, will be going after that story, trying to figure out how it happened, whether or not it was a rogue operation, no matter what it was. If, uh, if Chris Christie is telling the full, total, and nothing but the truth, it, it's still one of those things that's going to nag on him and that will be a, somewhat of a cloud because it was a scandal that happened in his office. Well, Chris Christie was a former federal prosecutor. I mean, this is not a guy who minces words. He's a strong leader. Uh, so could this be a problem of, of, of culture, of, of the kind of culture that's developed of the people who work uh, below him? Y yeah, I think that is possible because of the, the constant sort of either cliche or insight, whichever you choose to call it, on Chris Christie, which is that the fabulous part of him is that he's a balls on his feet, uh, leaning forward, to the moon Alice debater <laughs> and political aggressor for the ideas he believes in. But it has often been said that the bad side of that is a, a certain bullyingness and a, a very tough guy attitude he among the members. He says I'm members. not a bully. He yes, was, he, he he was sure to say that yesterday. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure people in politics should ever, if somebody says you're really stupid, I don't think the answer is a news conference where you say, I'm not, not stupid. stupid. <laughs> so don't be so on the, on the nose when people uh, accuse you of something like that. But anyway, we'll see. The headline here in part is that this is a story that is rolling, that is going into phase two, which is long interviews and investigative reports. It's just not going to leave for a while. By the end, we will think we know more and perhaps we will. But is Christie in some ways uh, put on notice that if he's going to be a national political figure that he has to have political staff underneath him who are up to the job, that it's not yeah. good enough uh, to accept uh, and not necessarily local operators, they could be fine, but that he has to up the level of the staff below him. Uh, w well here's something, I love being optimistic because it <laughs> It relieves the chronic headache. Um, here's an optimistic idea. It, it, if Chris Christie told the whole complete truth and these were a few bad apples doing some bad stuff who were operatives and appointees in his name, this will be a humbling experience for him. And he will consider the culture in his office and he will consider the exact nature of all he hires. And perhaps he will get a... Uh, a serious and first-rate and sober-minded and mature national staff, which is not to cast aspersions on, on everyone who works for him, but that might turn out to be good. I love optimism. Okay, well, we'll end on, a, <laughs> I, on an upbeat note there.